if you have access to a 3D printer, that opens up a whole world of possibilities. All right, so we just arrived to Wakanda. <laughs> So we just arrived to Wakanda. <laughs> now we arrived to the, uh, the power line trail. So we're gonna go to the trail and we're gonna, probably gonna look weird, but we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna make a little fire, put this pot in there and uh, start sizzling up the, uh, probably not the pot in there. We're probably just gonna put the seashells in there, but we're gonna make the uh, thing is called, uh, Carbon, carbonated oxidation or carbonated oxide. I believe that's what it's called. All right, Declan? Yes. I don't even know. It's something like that. It's a chemical for concrete. And uh, if I could flip this camera around, probably not. It's a chemical for concrete that, uh, that overall, you know, it makes the concrete more, it's just a different, a different source of how you can form concrete. We learned about in her historical preservation class. Uh, and yeah, we're just trying to make, we're gonna get that material out of, we're gonna get that material out of seashells that were provided to us from our professor, Mr. Wozniak. Shout out to him. And uh, yeah, we'll show you how it goes. We're out here, me, Declan Harrison. <laughs> and uh, yeah. here before had a good idea we don't even need to work that hard anymore there's already a fireplace and two seats that. what a view what a view so we're at the power lines in Williamsport right now you know obviously I already said it we walked the trail when we got there, we're going to set up our things and get to it. So me and Declan, we got the fire down. As you saw in the time lapse, we got that fire down. So we're just gonna wait a little bit. We gotta wait until it heats up. Then we gotta find a rock or something or anything. Or we're just gonna probably just pop them in there, the seashells, and wait until they fully turn white as the video that we were referenced to said. So we're just gonna wait until that happens and then we'll pop them out, mix them up in the pot, and then get the, uh, Hopefully I'm saying it right. The uh, carb, carbon dioxide, carbon date, I don't even know. If, if Harrison was here, he would tell me. He, we're, gonna, we're gonna get this material, then we'll go back to the lab, and we're gonna make get something out of the mold that he has of the Concrete Club. If you guys weren't familiar with the Concrete Club at Penn College, you gotta go check it out. It's really cool. Me and Declan are part of it, so it's Harrison, and Harrison's the president. Check it out. We got the fire down and Declan's just messing around with it. So I'm catching a bit. So about like probably 30 seconds past, Declan feels like the need to put a little bit more wood in there. So we're just gonna put a little bit more wood in there. I think we're good now. I think we're good now, but like, you know, might as well just keep it living for now. It's probably around like six or something. Six, 6.30, sun's about to set. We're just gonna, you know, obviously I already said it, but uh, anything is 
say, Declan? No. Nope. Hot enough, and there's enough holes at the bottom. So really good up. Surrounded heat on the shells. I'm trying to get them up. Just look at that intensity. Jeez! It's actually perfect because the wind helped us out a lot. There's a lot of wind, as you can probably already hear on the camera. It's probably like blasting your ears, so my bad. But yeah, that's it. We'll get the process down, everything good. And yeah, we'll enjoy it for a little bit, and then we'll get right to it. Yo, a couple more seconds just went by. That one just gave me the bandanas to cover up my neck. <laughs> he's over there. I don't know if you can zoom in. No, I can't. All right, he's over there making his uh, hammock that he has. What a guy, right? What a guy. But yeah, it's still doing here. We're still doing well. Uh, we're out here just enjoying the fire for now. But then once uh, it gets a little bit hot enough and we know where where they're correctly placed to uh, seashells, we'll uh, put them in. And yeah. Some fun extra credit, I gotta say. Some fun extra credit. Making some materials for concrete. This is pretty fun. This is one once in a lifetime experience. Look at this man. Look at this man. Sheesh, yo, who gets in a hammock like that? Bruh, like seriously. Man's literally wait, how'd you do that? <laughs> you got in it upside down. Alright. Yeah, definitely once in a lifetime experience. Making uh, seashells, turning them into <laughs> carbon carbonated oxide. Carbonated oxide, that's what I'm going to say it is. But I'm pretty sure it's called something else. It's something carbon. Carbonate, carbonated oxide or carbon. It's definitely not carbon dioxide. Um, the chemical that goes into uh, everything else that creates concrete. But yeah, that's it. And uh, we got the seashells right here. We'll place them in a little bit later. But yeah, that's it. And all right, see you in a bit. I probably said that a lot. All right, so I just dug out a little spot right there. The stick, just place them in there. I'm just gonna toss them in there. Sorry if there's not the real way how to do it, but the wind is like extremely over here. I think we could probably just toss them in there. There we go. There's like that right there, you can see it. Right there. Uh, that's a little too far, but it's all right. There we go. That was a perfect one. Perfect placement. Exactly. Just use a stick. Jump them in there. All right. Is that all of them? All right. Keep going. Keep going, bro. So one by one, we're just putting the stuff in there. again once again what a guy limestone believes in this there we go we got all of them back I think you can see them they're just gonna be blown with the fire they're gonna get heated up we're gonna push them a little bit more in and uh, they should turn into the right material we need after they turn all white and then we'll stop the fire or just let it die out and then we'll put them in the pot and mix them up if it does get too dark though we'll probably just mix them up and just you know just know that we mix them up they turn into a paste material and then out of that paste material we could let it dry and then we can take it back to the concrete labs and then we can make some actual concrete out of that we're currently thinking of a brain cast because they got uh, I think that that's what you would call it brain cast because they got a brain mold that they made in concrete club or in the concrete major. They just made it out of rubber, so we're thinking about that. We're talking about it. We're having little chats within the cuts of the video. But you can see that from there. I believe that was a piece of wood you just put in there, bro. Um Yeah. Uh, we're probably gonna start up the fire a little bit more now. Putting a little bit more logs in there or whatever. These fire sticks, plop them in there. That decays, it should fully, fully emerge the heat 
from the fire to the shells. That's how it is. The process is gonna be done. Some say we couldn't do it. We did it. Exactly. There's a lot of smoke coming out there. There you go. It's burning, it's raging, it's a raging fire. That's what we love to see here. And yeah, I'm gonna try not to say see you again because it's gonna be two seconds from now, but see you in a little bit. So now we're just chilling. You know, just living life, making concrete out of seashells. To our architecture students from Penn College, just doing this as an assignment. So yeah, we entered a, uh, what's it called? Tiny house competition. It's like an architectural competition online. We're a little group, me and Declan, so. If you want to see that, stay tuned. Probably come out in a future episode. We already spoke about the brief, the project brief. Oh yeah, just an idea. one of the places to go to if you're in Williamsport. It's my first time here. How many times have you been here? Yeah, just in case you didn't hear that, Declan said once. Definitely a nice place. Nice place to see. Thank you for progress. Alright, here they go. Alright, so we're right now, we're taking up the shells. Well, Declan's taking the rest out. I just dunked half of the water so we can just take them out. It's a lot smoother without burning our faces. So yeah, doing that the process. Putting them in the pot and then after the pot we're gonna see them, you know, we're gonna put water in there and mix them up a little bit to make the paste. All right, so we're just wrapping up the final parts. Declan's just putting out the spoon here and I'm just selecting it out. Which one is concrete, which one, not concrete, which one is a shell, I believe this is a shell. Yeah, you can kind of see the layers of this. You have a focus. Well, you can see the layers of it normally. I don't know why it's not focusing, but you can see the layers. Identifying that it's a shell. Some of the shells already uh, got a little cracked and cracked up, turned to little pieces. We're here trying to find them. So far we got almost as much as we came with. If not, a little bit more, because we might have accidentally put real rocks in there, but it's all good. It's part of the process, you know? So. Wrap after mixing with base. Yeah. All right, so I'm just gonna pour it in the water. I believe it's just like the amount, the same amount the guy put in there, which was probably that much. We'll see. If we need more, we'll add some more. Start seeing how it is. As you can see, they're starting, they're actually, yeah, yeah, they actually are starting to crack. Because some more water is necessary. They should, it, they should turn into a limestone paste. Oh, they actually are. Legit. You just gotta like knead it like a potato or something. Nice. Alright, I thought this was like a total fail. I think it just needs time to soak. Just let it kind of soak up the water a bit. I mean, his video kind of skipped around too, so it makes sense. It's not a quick process. I thought it was going to be instant, like, no. just powder. It's 
definitely a little bit of rocks in here, but it's all right. We're coming to you at, coming to you live, sponsored by the Architecture Lab 2017, the greatest lab out there. Out here with the, uh, me and Declan are part of the Architecture Club too. As we're, part, as we're part of the country club, we like to partake in different different areas to learn a little bit more about everything. I'm the senior class representative, and Declan is the treasurer. If you ever come to college, highly recommend architecture. You definitely don't get an experience like this anywhere else. And if you were wondering why why just me and Declan, I did ask almost all of our friends. And yeah, I do have friends. Um, if they wanted to join us for this extra credit, and they were like, nah, I don't got time. But like, who doesn't have time for seashells? Am I right? So this is how the Romans used to do it back in the day, but not really the Romans because it's the seashells. They had areas around the sea. And the other areas, the Rome, where they uh, weren't next to a sea, they would use uh, limestone and do the same thing. They would bake it in fire. The same process. Just without the seashells. Consistency is a lot, a lot better. It's a lot mushy. It's nice. It smells like the sea, it's probably because it's seashells. Once we have the paste, we're gonna mix it with some uh, fly ash that the concrete club has. Ratio of water and um, probably some sand, and uh, make a nice brick out of this. Probably do a brain or a brain, yeah, that's right. Yeah, because they got that mold there. We saw that mold, and we we're like, might have to, you know. If Cat is watching my video, you'll know, might have to, right? Proof that we have friends. Yeah, my roommate. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, getting pretty dark, so we'll just uh, meet back up with you guys again. All right, well, uh, we're yeah. done. Positive, you know, whatever you were having in there. Yep. Where did you guys get the positive? Just from my Jello mold. Oh, okay. Yeah, but you know. Jello molds are um, kind of limiting uh, in terms of <laughs> the range of possibilities. Yeah. You know, you're kind of beholden to whatever they make. Whatever they want your jello to look like, that's what you can buy. Um, but if you have access to a 3D printer, that opens up a whole world of possibilities there. Pretty much anything you can fit on the, uh, the printer itself. So. Yep. They have these little filtration systems that'll collect the fumes from the uh, all the leftover. Um, I guess when they're um, when they're burning the coal for energy, and uh, they'll collect that into this fine, very very fine powder. That's denser. I believe it's denser than Portland cement. I believe it's denser than Portland cement. We'll have to double check on that, but um, it does react with some of the leftover chemicals that are uh, that are byproducts of the Portland cement concrete experience, you could call it. The whole experience when you have Portland cement concrete is you have all these chemicals going on, and most of them are turning into what you want, but there's a few leftover chemicals that are like kind of useless um, and inert as they are for the most part. But when you introduce fly ash. 
fly ash kind of eats all those things up, reacts and densifies into that material that you were trying to get most of your concrete to turn into in the first place. But again, they were byproducts, didn't do anything. Fly ash reacts with those kind of byproducts and gives you a denser product. So this will help with impermeability, you know, kind of uh, prevent the ingress of all these different, you know, waterborne, um, well, not waterborne, but um, things that water carries in. Like, what, what is water carrying? Oh, salts, salts deteriorate the concrete. Uh, it brings in, water brings in uh, water itself, which then freezes in the winter. That can even be a problem, just the water itself. So there's a number of things that can happen. Um, and so you want to waterproof your concrete as much as you can. If you can waterproof the concrete itself, that's best. Because um, then your structure is just the, the material itself is, is waterproof. However, people will um, kind of go the extra length to put like an epoxy, an epoxy decking, uh, like a finish to uh, waterproof the deck of, say, a bridge. Just so it lasts a hundred years or whatever they're trying to make it. Um, uh, last four so that's that there's other materials like this heavy duty scale perfect a bucket is 60 pounds brilliant that's what i'm looking for i'm looking for 60 60 pounds of course aggregate and i'm gonna guess that this is gonna weigh more because the sand kind of compacts so this is 67 so uh, pretty much roughly the same so we can kind of take some out just to get, I'm going to get 60 of each and this should give me about, I think this gives me about a cubic foot. And you want to get a measuring tape actually, measure those. Let's, here's how we're going to figure, we're going to get our yield. This is one way to get yield. Uh, you can also measure the volume of everything that's going in all the ingredients and then be like, oh, that's my volume. But look, we're going to get the, the, the yield volume of what we're getting based on these weights by measuring the dimensions of this. By the way, and then see, see how, much, how many of them we fill up. We'll do a factor there. Before, before the materials go in, a lot of guys, um, and ACI standard says that you should um, butter the mixer beforehand, which is a slurry of cement and water into a very thin paste. It's like mostly water with some cement paste, I believe. And they just run it through the mixture. They let the, the, it rotate, you know, some odd revolutions, and they dump that out. Now it's buttered. And so that way the cement won't clump up on there. You know, the cement powder, once you put your actual weight of cement in there, it doesn't ball up. That was, you don't want that, you know, you really don't want that happening. Because then it doesn't thoroughly mix into the, uh, the mass of what you're making. Producer, you know, in a ready mix, um, factory. This is what the guy told me. This is what the guy told me. You can read the ACI document, American Concrete Institute. They published the standards for mixing, mixing procedures. Okay. But uh, roughly, this is what the guy said. You just want to add about 80% of this. You're actually supposed to do this before the rock's even in there, but we threw some rock in, whatever. I mean, you're right, but... So you want like 80% of this in there. And um, actually, it doesn't really matter what order it goes in because you do 80% of the water, and then it says add half the rock, which we already did, and half the sand. It's order order is just personal preference. So, it's like what came, what came first, the chicken or the egg? Chicken or the egg? Yeah, I mean they both just really both could have come at the same time. I mean, so get half of that in there. Yeah. We're just homogenizing the mixture as much as we can, mixing everything together. 80% of our water. Um, oh, I forgot. We also want, th there is one chemical we want to put inside the concrete. Other than Portland cement, you could call that like a chemical that reacts. So what we're going to add, because this is going to be in a pre-stall environment, is we want to add air entrainment, microscopic air bubbles. It creates a, um, almost think of the way that like in an anthill where you have like a, a canal of like tunnels and stuff like that, this creates like little air pockets with like voids between them interconnecting. And what happens is, is maybe I should have this on. Um, any any time that during the winter when the water freezes, 
the water that turns solid that freezes. Has a place to go to. Yeah, yeah well, 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 that that turns to a solid. Right. So it's just a solid, and it it kind of expands in volume inside inside the the canals within the concrete. Microscopically, there is some water. This is my understanding. This is like a really chopped up rough understanding. There are microscopic water par particles that do not freeze during the during 30 degrees, 28 degrees, whatever it is. During that temperature change, the microscopic air uh, water par particles are still liquid, and they need somewhere to go because as water freezes, it expands 7% by volume or something like that. And so it pushes the liquid microscopic water in some direction. And if you don't have a system of, of pressure relief valves, you can call it, inside the concrete, you got water to go into, then it's gonna go into, into the, the only direction it can, which is out of the concrete. In, a, in every direction, it just blows the concrete apart, basically, with that. So, anyway. So, we need um, three milliliters per 100 pounds of cement. No, three fluid ounces per 100 pounds of cement. And we have 30 pounds of cement. So, 30% of three fluid ounces. At point eight, yeah, something like that. Taking a bump again. You can fit on the uh, the printer itself. So, yep. Mold, and then we poured concrete in the rubber mold, and we got our brain. So, kind of cool. <laughs> Kind of sweet, you know. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna go you make whatever you want, though. I mean, it could be anything. It could be a, you know, a sculpture. It could be, um, again, you know, a bench. It could be a necklace. It could be, you know.